morning, everybody. Tom Metalhead, weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well today. In the midst of all the severe weather and the tropics starting to heat up here, we also have a new monthly outlook that's come out here. July is fresh off the press here as of yesterday, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into that here. And we're looking way different than what we did in the month of June here as far as the outlook is concerned. The heat wave is unfortunately increasing a little bit. But there are going to be some key changes over here. For example, you can see the above average temperature areas over here, especially where we get into that 70 to 80 percentile range over towards the northeast and just east of the four corners. Now, that's pretty much already been there since the middle to back half of this month. And we're going to expect that trend to continue. We also have that heightened probability up towards 60 to 70 percent all the way through the eastern half of the U.S. here. But I do expect maybe towards the beginning to the middle of the month, it might be a little bit cooler than average out towards the northwest in particular. We are going to see a pattern flip that will help bring, bring that in here, so to speak. There could be an increase in activity towards the far northwestern states and more so over towards Canada as we go forward here, especially towards the beginning of the month. And one indicator of this, even though we're looking at the 30 day average, is usually whenever we see southwest alaska looking below average here which is what we're seeing in fact we actually have a 40 to 50 percent chance of it being below average for a pretty good chunk of the region here so that's something to keep an eye on here and then also northeast nebraska is showing above average probabilities so weather pattern could be a little bit wonky to start out in the month and then there's of course the wild card of the tropics which also could change the way our weather setup is as well those tropical systems actually have the ability to move whole ridges if needed be. And we're going to see a ridge try to pop up again over the eastern half of the U.S., which is going to verify this area right here. Usually when you get a ridge of high pressure, weather's fair, but it's also usually pretty hot. Now, in regards to precipitation, this is probably the sharpest below average chance of precip that I've seen in a while here. So a little bit of concern over here towards areas like Idaho, Western Wyoming, and then small portions of Oregon and also Washington as well. But we're actually at the 50 to 60 percentile range here for below average precip. And then over towards the Ohio Valley, we have another spot that's at 40 to 50 percent. Like I said, the weather pattern is going to be kind of wonky, but like the storm track is going to be kind of favoring a little bit more so north of the border. There are going to be some areas over here where I think that we will get some precipitation earlier in the month. But as we get later into the month, I think we're going to start to be, see a much more stable pattern. And then eventually what I'm thinking is going to happen in the inverse. The southeast is going to see a little bit more in the way of tropical activity. We've already seen a number of um, tropical waves trying to develop and even more in later model runs here. So it would not surprise me to see this verify, particularly over towards the coast. We'll have to see how things pan out with that. But also another reason why I'm thinking up towards the far northern reaches, let's say over towards the Dakotas, maybe maybe Minnesota, UP of Michigan and Wisconsin is also the chance of above average precip over towards Alaska. Usually we'll see a lot of storm systems come in from Alaska and depending on how deep those troughs will end up digging, will usually determine where it goes. During this time of year, we don't have any sort of super trough, so we don't usually see as much moisture in the lower 48. And that looks like it's going to be the case here. Speaking of which, we can actually take a look at those troughs on a week to week basis right now. We're still not quite in range to look at it at a day by day basis. That's going to be more so towards the end of the month. But if we were to go ahead and take a look at what our pressure anomalies are going to be you can see the ridge that's over here this is going to be towards the northeast and this is what's going to start out in the month of july we have a little area over here that's cooler than average right now so starting to tip into a classic negative pna setup you see a secondary ridge that's popped up here as well so continue to go forward here we start to see more high pressure come in once again the ridge now starts to shift off to the west once more and we start to flip a little bit over towards the east a bit but we still continue to have high pressure pretty dominant over here towards the northeast a little bit here. Also, there's going to be uh, oscillations here that will help 
kind of keep that locked in, so to speak. So if you're in the Northeast, you need to be paying attention to those temperatures and make sure that you're staying hydrated, of course, over towards the Four Corners regions out to the West and East of the Four Corners region. It's not unfamiliar territory for you guys, but same rules apply to you nonetheless here, but you already know this. That being said, we can actually get a relative idea of what those values could be in regards to the temperature. In regards to above average, we could see about 25, 30 degrees above average on this last week here, of June over towards the central US, also over towards the Northeast, there's a few pockets of that as well. Gonna be widespread 15 to 20 degrees above average areas over here towards the Ohio Valley and of course over towards mid-Atlantic as well. For the most part, the US as a whole right now is predominantly hot. But as we see that pattern change occur, we start to see some of that cold air or below average temperatures start to sneak into the Northwest here. You even see right about at average or slightly below average towards South Texas. Like I said, that has a lot to do with the tropics being active. Even if we don't get a tropical storm, all that rainfall is gonna help keep the temperatures down a bit. We do start to level off just a little bit towards the mid-Atlantic here and even into the Southeast where we see, don't see as sharp of a departure from average temperatures here. Still could see 10, 15, even 20 degrees above average, but it's not quite as bad, but it is also summertime. So can't necessarily say that it's gonna be a groundbreaking impact with that there. Nonetheless, start to be prepared for what looks to be a very hot June across the board here for most of us in the lower 48 as a whole here. In regards to the precipitation, Right now, we're kind of an interesting pattern. Look, we're favoring a lot of the northern states, in particular Great Lakes and the Northeast, but look at how quickly things end up shifting. Notice how we talked about earlier that areas like the Dakotas, Nebraska, uh, Nebraska's in there as well. I was really meaning to say Minnesota, UP Michigan, and also Northern Wisconsin are getting more in the way of moisture. That trend's gonna hold for a little while here. The rest of the country is kind of about at average with precip or a little bit dry. Of course, we're talking about the Gulf of Mexico states. So continue to go forward here. We eventually start to see another shift. Eventually the southeast, some of the mid-Atlantic starts to get into the action. Like I said, I do think the tropics gets more active. And with that, we'll bring more rainfall opportunities to the southern parts of the U.S. Eventually, though, we do seem to level off just a little bit, but... The unknown, like I said before in the beginning of the video, is going to be these tropical entities. How do they strengthen? How do they evolve from this point? I do think there's a chance for at least a couple of storms. We'll have to see how things go from that point. So interestingly enough, if we go back, we can actually talk about the Enzo pattern here. We're actually done with the El Nino phase. That's not a secret. We've been knowing that for a while and we've been on a trend that's kind of favored us going into the neutral phase, which we're in now. But we're very quickly set to go into a La Nina soon. In fact, we're actually there now. It, it's crazy how quickly it happened as well. So anyone that doesn't know, anything that's above 0.5 here is considered a El Nino phase. That's positive 0.5, by the way. Once you get to 1.5, that is a strong El Nino. Earlier this year, that's where we were. To start 2024, we were pretty much in a strong El Nino phase. And very quickly, we shifted into the neutral phase by the time we got into March. Or by the time we got into May, excuse me. I've got to get my notes right. <laughs> but once we got into June here, we very, we very quickly shifted into a notable neutral phase and actually as we head into july we're slated to go into a la nina phase where the waters over towards the pacific are cooled and you would think okay what does that have to do with my weather i actually have a video that discusses that in the top right corner here so check that link out if you want to know more but usually with la nina statistically speaking we have much more impactful hurricane seasons, much more busier hurricane seasons too and that's a big part of what played into the forecast amongst other factors. I also have a video for that, which I have in the top right hand corner as well. But as we continue to go through July, August, and September, 
we definitely shift into that El Nino phase here for sure. And it actually looks like it even continues all the way through the end of the year here. We don't get to a strong El Nino, but we definitely get into a notable one. We're at the negative one phase, just like I said before. Anything that would be low 0.5 is considered a La Nina phase. So that being said, another factor we can look at here, we're getting into the nerdy stuff I know, but we're getting into the oscillations here. So there's two areas I often look at. This is the Arctic Circle right here. When we're looking for pressure here. If we see a negative AO or a negative NAO, we'll see that with the blue colors here. Positive AO would be the red colors here. So see a negative AO and NAO, which is going to help keep that warm air in play for the lower 48 right now. But as time goes on, we're going to see a shift. We're going to start to see a positive AO begin to take over again. And usually during the summertime, that's going to help keep the heat. It's almost going to be somewhat like a heat gnome in a way. We even see a positive NAO. So with that being said, usually we're usually when we have stuff like this heat wave is going to be the dominant topic here over a large portion of the u.s unfortunately sucks for me especially since i work outside but have to keep we have to keep ourselves hydrated we have to keep ourselves cool you need to limit your outdoor activity especially if you have any sort of pre-existing health conditions but that being said, that's pretty much all I got for you for this first look at July here. We'll make an update video towards the end of this month. Hope to see you there. Till then, take care. Have an awesome rest of your day. I'm heading to work. Till then, Tire Metalhead Weatherman signing out.